Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Boston Motorsports Maserati in Brighton, Massachusetts, we're driving a 2022 Maserati Quattroporte Modena. It is in Blue Nobile, which I guess we can assume means Noble Blue. I don't speak much Italian, but I think I can figure that out. We've got a three liter V6 twin turbo that produces 420-ish horsepower, and it sounds fantastic. And although this chassis might be a little long in the tooth and often has a hard time competing with Mercedes and BMW and Audi in this class, there is something very special about an Italian luxury Grand Tour that makes me really appreciate that this car still exists today. We've got all wheel drive. We're on a 245 section tire up front. We've got two 85s in the rear and an LSD to keep those rear wheels locked for street performance. And the style, it's nothing you haven't seen before, but facelifts are good. And I think these cars are really modifiable. And I think that's why people continue to buy them because they don't look average. They do have a little bit of flair. They do have a je ne sais quoi that the BMW and the Audi just lack. It's a bit windy, so sorry if I sounded muffled there. I just didn't want you to hear all the wind noise. Let's start off with some creature comforts. We've got frameless doors. We always like that. That's an indication of a sports car. And then we've got dual pane glass. So we know that ride comfort and quality is very important in this. In the back, we've got the Zenia leather and this incredible sort of basket weave style. And that's something that I just haven't really seen anywhere else. When we sit back here, it's fairly comfortable. We have our sun shades, we have heated seats. We are good to go. And then pull down the center armrest, beautiful chrome. Usually not a huge fan of chrome, but in Italian cars, you can get away with chrome. Storage space, charging ports, and then cup holders. Yes, gotta have some cup holders. And despite being kind of a large hump in the middle here, this actually is a third seat with a seat belt. So you can safely ride here, but there's not a whole lot of headroom if you were to do that. Up front, I just think the layout of this is really classic and anyone who's complaining about digital displays, LCDs, all of the basically iPads controlling all of our cars and feeding us information, they should not be complaining about the Maserati because we've got analog dials, we've got a beautiful steering wheel with just the information we need, and we have a touchscreen for our infotainment system. This one is equipped with soft closed doors, does the trick. Under the hood, it's actually pretty under here. There is the Heart R 3 liter V6 with two turbos, and I genuinely enjoy the sound of this engine. Now, the V8 is very cool, and the Trofeo, I think it's a fun engine, but I do think that this serves the purpose by being powerful enough and providing adequate Italian character. But none of it matters if it doesn't drive well. So, let's jump in and go for a ride. What it lacks in the most modern technology when you sit in the seat, it definitely gains in the size of this key. This is enormous and weighty. Aston Martin could learn a lesson from this because this is a lovely key. The Xenia package gives us this really cool texture and I dig it because it's we've got black leather here, brown kind of saddle leather here, but it really mixes it up in between with the texture. We have our push to start over on the left. And if we drop it into sport mode, instantly there is a change to that exhaust. It's valved. That is such an amazing little rasp. I really dig the way this sounds. It's not outrageous. It's classy. It's high strung. It wants to go. Let's start by rolling into it off the line. Well, it's not going to shock you with its zero to 60. It is plenty fast enough and it is definitely in that power range to be considered an enthusiast vehicle. But that's not why people kind of cast shade on Maserati and the Quattroporte. It's because they can get a seven series or a five M550i for similar or less money. And this one, as it's optioned, sits at about 130, $135,000. Starts at 112. That is quite a bit. But what I will say is in this economy, 
This is probably one of the very few brands where you can walk into a dealership and you can actually get a discount. You could go in and find some incentives. There's pretty much no way to do this anywhere else. Very little drama from the all-wheel drive system. I can feel that rear end tightening up with the limited slip differential. I like that. Confidence inspiring on the brakes so far. Transmission programming slightly haphazard, but it's doing what I needed to do. It's keeping me in the power band. We'll take it easy over the bumps. We are in sport mode, so that transmission is going to be keeping those revs way up. have to give Maserati credit for making a car that is fun to drive. This is genuinely fun to drive. I think although the steering is light, it's really tactile. It feels like an older world car. It feels like what I like in my E92 M3. It kind of has that charm. And in a market where enthusiasts continue to complain about how things are getting vague and numb and silly and cars are too fast and they're too fat and they're too heavy and they just do all the things for you, this car actually kind of answers those questions. And it isn't slow. So don't be down on the fact that it's not a 600 horsepower monster. I mean, this V6 still pulls to redline beautifully and it gets the job done. like how intuitive it is you can kind of get in anyone who anyone who drives a car or knows how a car drives can get in this you don't have to like feel it out I feel like every time I get into a new BMW I was just driving a G82 M4 and I had to like think about it I had to be very cautious about how I was approaching the car and am I being too clunky with it you know this car actually does feel pretty tossable and natural and I'm getting the feedback through the car that I desire as a driver. Look at that. Great front end grip and a bunch of grunt out of that exhaust on the upshift. What a hoot. I think most people who buy this car are probably gonna be sitting on the highway for you know an hour or two a day, probably commuting to their city office from their lovely country home because you know it's a six-figure price tag on a luxury grand tour. And it's a pretty sweet place to be, and it makes an interesting statement. I I I feel like it's a little more interesting than the typical German, where you know the Germans are so practical. There's definitely some passion and some love in this car, in the sound, in the way it drives, in the interior even, and it's noticed. But I get it, like the public perception of Maserati can be a little tricky because it's expensive and it is a little behind in a lot of technology. But I, I, I have to assume anyone buying this car is fully aware of those shortcomings and they're just into the vibe that this is fun to toss around and fun to drive. in the wet. I mean, this all-wheel drive system actually does lay it down pretty nicely. And I can say that confidently because I was just driving an M4 rear-wheel drive and it didn't quite give me that level of, uh, uh, I don't know, comfort. Ooh, automatic, uh, I don't like that. I do not like that. We gotta turn these off. Let's see. How do we, let's missed. There we go. All right, we got it. Always trying to learn the nomenclature of a new car that I'm jumping in. That's always a tricky thing. Jump. 
giant paddle shifters. And they're column mounted. How Italian, how supercar of Maserati to do that. Some things that I would change. Uh, the seating position, I wish I could get a little bit lower in the car. I am a, just a touch higher than I'd like to be. Direct comparison to a sports car, maybe that's the problem. I don't know that anyone else or normal people would really care about that. I think a lot of people actually like to be sat up high, like an SUV. So, you know, maybe that's just my preference. And then the steering wheel is actually offset just a bit to the right, but actually not as far to the right as a bunch of Mercedes that I've been driving recently, which like, I feel like I'm in a different part of the car than, than, than the steering wheel in those, which is very bizarre. I like the little purr it makes when you come to a stop. Idle always sounds kind of exciting in this thing. All right, we're gonna turn off the sport dampers. That is a bit unnecessary on these roads today. Yeah, I gotta say, this isn't what I expected. Sometimes I think I look at a car and I assume I'm just not gonna like something or I am gonna like something. And I have had just completely flip-flop today where I'm in the M4 and I feel like I'm just tearing it down. Yet, I get in this Maserati and I feel the need to build it up. are very low profile tires and I am acutely aware of the minefield that these New England roads are presenting to me right now. These puddles get scary because sometimes, sometimes what looks like just a shallow puddle might actually have some depth to it. Yeah, I'm not screwing with that. I'm proud of myself. I don't have to bleep that out. All right, let's get back on the highway. send the truck not me I'm just cruising so far be it from me to tell anybody how to spend their hard-earned money or if they're lucky their trust fund I don't know I don't have one of those that would be cool but I can tell you what a driving experience is like and I gotta say, I'm like pleasantly surprised by kind of an old school, dialed in, entertaining and tactile driving experience from this Quadraporte. I, I was not expecting to have this feedback. I was expecting to try to dig for things I liked about it. And I kind of do like it. Maybe it's not worth the money to you. Maybe it is. That's for you to decide. But like I said, you probably get some dope incentives. So if you do want one, you might be able to get one at a, a, a pretty stellar discount. So, thank you to Boston Motorsports Maserati in Brighton, Massachusetts for lending me this Quattroporte Modena with this fantastic paint color, a wonderfully dialed in sounding exhaust from a three liter twin turbo Italian stallion. Man, I'm just having a good time. And at the end of the day, that's all, all I wanna do. And frankly, I'm watching bring a trailer all the time and I'm watching people spend stupid money on cars that absolutely do not deserve it so if that's the case with used market this seems like a bargain if you need that deep cut comparison don't forget to respect the drive and i'll see you in the next one i'll see you in the next one this is this is fun i'm having a good time analog gauges analog gauges alone that does it for me but then but then it's fun it's not vague. I can feel everything it's doing. I do not like some of the things. Like the, I don't, I don't love all of the infotainment. I, the lane keep assist is like violently angry at me sometimes. Even though I feel like I'm not being that bad. Okay. Whatever. It's cool. It's cooler than I thought. 